We are joined now by Jeremy Mullins, the founder of Butter It Up, which is a local group of coffee shops doing what their name suggests and what Dr. Oz just mentioned on its show. It's all about buttered coffee. Look at Look all at this. That. It looks Wait, delicious. Is Paula Dean your mother? No, 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 no. Okay. no. We're just checking. <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> okay, so explain the concept behind this because we have two different sides to the story here. It started this conversation that a lot of people are trying to figure out, is it good for you? Is it bad for you? Does it help you lose weight, doesn't it? Yeah, when we look at, you know, it's just, it's a piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. when we're talking about the diet and the weight loss and things of that nature. But what we want to look at is so many people are laden their coffee in the morning with sugar. You know, so when we look at butter, you know, cream is the foundation of butter. A lot of people forget that when you first hear buttered coffee, you go, ooh, that sounds disgusting. Mm -hmm. But basically, butter is churned cream. Yeah, it's, it's churned cream. And I think sometimes a lot of people think butter, it's it's that stick of butter that's maybe commercialized. Right. And, and it's, a, it's a special type of butter. So it's the grass-fed butter. So the cows have grazed on grass, you know, 100% of their life. So it's not the grain-fed, you know, conventional um, butter that we may see in the store. Yeah, so you don't want to just go pick up any certain type of butter it needs in it is it unsalted too correct do you want to do that? Okay. unless someone would like you know I mean, you can. Yeah, a taste right. of that but yeah it's it's unsalted grass-fed butter okay this may sound like a stupid thing to say but we have to clarify too pardon the pun it is butter a lot of people have margarine in their refrigerator right now and they they interchange them with recipes and stuff this is not the same thing correct you sure you have butter. yeah especially when you start talking about the nutrition and the health that's what we go into what we're trying to do is really like you know a farm to table uh -huh. you know and we're talking about 100 percent grass-fed butter that's totally different different than maybe a chemical enhanced or altered margarine. And what we've seen in your shop is you've got a lot of people who are really dedicated to fitness who are buying into this. I mean, I've been there several times and everybody there looks like... Yeah, if we look at this trend of the last, you know, we say since the 1970s, you know, everyone's working out more, but we continue to have a rise in obesity and a rise in diabetes. And, and what we're trying to do is maybe turn conventional education or nutrition education on its, you know, its head and, and go with a, you know, a lower carb approach with a higher fat. Okay, so let's talk about this fat that you're yeah, putting in the let's coffee. Let's go how ahead and it? make one. You show us how to do it because we need to, you don't want to pile all of this in one cup of coffee, I'm sure. One of the biggest mistakes that we see, so we talk about this, and sometimes maybe, you know, for me doing it for the last three or four years, I forget, like, we forget to tell people to blend it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we ask them to put, you know, the butter into the coffee, they forget and they just kind of scoop. <laughs> Why is blending yeah. so important? Because you know a lot of people at home, if they're looking at doing this, think about the the, the fad that's in coffee's making right now with those single cup. You know, you can't really do that with this. Right. We go and you know we can go into you know the importance of having a, a local blend or a um, you know organic blend uh -huh. of coffee. You know also, but what we want to do is you know we take fresh brewed coffee. All right. You know, preferably organic. We like to support local, which okay. is where we get our coffee from. Okay. And then we use an ice cream scoop, which is going to be a little bit over um, a tablespoon. All right. And we're just going to put it in. And for a 16-ounce coffee, which we're making a little extra for all of us today, you know, we would do two scoops of this. Some clients will ask for a little more, some for a little less. But usually for a single serving, you want to do just one tablespoon. When we're looking at one cup of coffee, it is one tablespoon okay. of the butter. And again, right. people are looking at that and saying, oh my goodness, that's a lot of fat in there. And this is, uh, A, the mistake a lot of people make is they'll fix it like that and leave it <laughs> and attempt to drink it. You know, but... We have to remember that fat is not bad for us. You know, we're looking at roughly 100 calories per tablespoon, mm -hmm. you know, for the butter. And like I said, that mistake a lot of people make is they'll have a thousand calories of sugar in their coffee in the morning. Well, look at the, this is look at the coffee drinks that are so popular around this country right now. You, you wait in line, people are buying frappuccinos, all these kinds of things, you know, even at fast food restaurants these days that are cashing in on that craze. And that's some of the most caloric things that they actually have on the menu. Correct. And we go back to the, you know, what was drawn on the screen with Dr. Oz, you know, that vicious, what we call the vicious up and down cycle. A lot of that's also related to the blood sugars and the insulin level. Okay. So the individual drinks, you know, a load of that sugar, the blood sugars go up, then they have that crash that comes right. in, so they think they need more caffeine. But okay. this will curb that, so let's mix it up. So what we should see in it is it turns a nice That looks delicious frothy. to me. It does. And what we tell most people is it's going to taste like um, a latte. All so right. it kind of cuts down on the you know strong coffee taste. It's frothy. So we get a nice frothy, creamy coffee. So this isn't about counting calories, it's about maintaining your blood sugar level the same way. Yeah, and it's, you know, we look at, you know, the nutritional approach we go is, you know, to maintain blood sugar and insulin levels. 
You know, so, you know, an individual mentioned earlier, you know, cutting the bagel out, you know, I think Dr. Oz mentioned, cut the bagel out, but have the butter in the coffee. Right. right. So there's nothing wrong with carbohydrates. You know, we don't teach a no-carb approach, but, you know, we overeat carbs as a society. Right. And fat, as far as the most filling macronutrient, it is fat. All right. So. You just have to figure out what's best for your body, do some research behind it, but this is good, right? And you because like it? this trend is exploding, you're exploding as well. You're popping up all over the region. Right. Yeah, we currently have a site in Charleston, Barbersville here in downtown Huntington and we're looking at Hurricane Beckley Lewisburg in the near future. All so right. again if Thank you want to so do this at home just us. very quickly I'm sorry. That's okay. If you want to do this at home very quickly what you need to be able to do is get butter that is unsalted. Grass fed. Grass fed. Preferably whipped or not really? Uh, no. Just, it doesn't matter. Nope. All right. And again, one tablespoon per one tablespoon per cup. Per cup. Thank you, Jeremy, for joining us. Delicious. Thank you, guys. All right. And if you would like more information, of course, we'll have this posted over on WSAZ.com. You can just click on featured links.